Okay, okay. so speaking of that, when the indictment come down, what's that like? When the indictment came down, I was, I was in jail. No bond, no nothing. What you mean you was in jail? For something else? No, I was, when the indictment came out, I was already locked up. When I got, we, they caught her that morning, caught me in air that morning in the car. Okay, yeah, walk me through that. It was December 29th. They called me. What year? That was December 29th in 89. The thing was up for me going to Alpharetta to see if one of my co defenders, and they weren't the co defender that him, Jane, I can say his name, Jane Brown. He was in Alpharetta. He had got knocked off for a fight and they gave him some months. He was up there. And I was going to Alpharetta. I had been trying to get Al to go with me all the time, but he never wanted to go. But for some reason this morning, he called me at 425, 435 that morning. It's, it's a Friday night. Never, that time of night, I was started off being suspicious. Oh, he called me that time of morning. He asked me, could he go to see Jane Brown with me? He never wanted to see Jane Brown. So my instinct was jumping. Uh, something ain't right. But then my wife cooled me down. Cause my wife said, out of all your boys, Al is the only one I trust with you. I don't trust nobody else. That made me relax. So I got up off of him. So I told him I'd be to get him. So I went and picked him up that morning. And he started stalling. He wanted to go to my three kids, my mom called for me and her brother there to, to get some, to pay him some money. And I'm trying to get the Alpharetta, because I got to go see see Jay. I don't ever miss seeing JB when it's time to see him. But he, we go end up going to the mall. We end up going to his mom house. We get this mom house. She's still on, in Bellevue. It's one of these old choir streets. And I'm sitting in the car with him to come out. And I can hear the, the, the number back then you had it with the telephone. I can hear the number dialing, and then he said, I'm on my way. So I'm thinking he's talking to a girl or something like that, but he called and called him and told he him. Called he called the know, police? Yeah, he called him and told so him. So what he was doing, he was an informant? He was sitting me up. He had gotten knocked. I don't know this till I got it later on. Okay. He got knocked off. In he had he been selling stuff in Bellevue. He got knocked off that night. He was down to the police station when he called me. They're one of your closest partners. Yeah, one of my closest, the one that did most snitching. Okay. He, he was down there, so he called me and told me he, he only even wanted to ride to CJB. He telling me all this, but I don't know he'd been that knocked off that night. Right. So when I he for he for been meet me at the club. We for been going to the club and dancing. He had this new outfit he wanted to wear, he wanted to show it off, but he never came. I went to the club, he never came. And when he called me that night and told me he'd been got knocked off over in Bellevue, but he don't tell me none of this. Him. And my wife made me relax. She said, I don't trust nobody but him. So when I go get him, I'm on my way to see the JB, but he wanna stop by the mall. He want to go back to his house. He want to go to his mom out and sit the video thing for her so she can see the see, see whatever she wanted to watch that day for putting it. He started stalling me. And I thought I'd been on the road. So I said, I'm going to go by myself. He said, no, man, I got one more stop. I'm going to go back home and I'm going to change clothes one more time. I already screamed, but I still ain't locked in on what's going on. So when I pull up at his house to take him there before he can change clothes, should have caught me again. His wife was in the one holding their little daughter. And she was doing this, hanging out, mm, mm, mm. I said, me, snap. I said, girl, what you doing there for? Why you keep shaking your head? So he looked up and he said, get out of that woman. She trying to so warn she me trying to too. tell you. She trying to tell me again, but I still ain't, I ain't locking on. So I go up there, he do what he do. We on our way from the go to go again. But I needed to tell my wife something. He said, go on down there and tell her. We go back to my wife's shop down there. When he and her telling joke, got the girl laughing and all this stuff. But he's stalling us. So now then he said, I need to go one more time, go over and see Willie and get this money from Willie, man. Give him this money, man. I said, man, I'm telling you, I can't go over there to tell him, huh? Because he stayed right the, the next street over my wife and her mama. We live with her mama. I said, I get caught over there at the yard. I'm in trouble. She ain't going to be there. He's he, he laying it all out for me. But my brain just ain't locking in on that. I'm being side up. So I go open it up. We pull in the backyard. I didn't even know she had a backyard. He said, go around the backyard. So we come out. They already up. I had one on this on uh, Winston. I had one on the street here, you know, one on they was they was already there. And we pulled out. One of them uh, hit the light, bam, hit his lights. 
I go, oh, but I ain't paying no attention because I ain't got nothing. I'm on my way to Atlanta. The CJB. Hey, I said, get put a bunch of chairs. Go, let's go, man, let's go. He got something. He had to, he had a, what he had on? He had two, yeah, I think he had two and a half. He had a, I think he had two, he had two and a half ounces of a rock and some powder on him. I said, and then he said, man, I, I, he couldn't try to jump out of the car. What you running for, man? Hey, ain't nothing. He, he jumped out. We, he just come from a, we had just come from a softball tournament from Daytona. He had broke his wrist in four places. He get up on the fence, throw himself over the fence. And I'm starting to say, what you running for, man? Why is you running? He run through the pad and he put it in the trash can. And going on, run back to my mother-in-law, how they catch him down there. Shake him down, all this stuff. They take me down to the federal brewery. When I get down to the brewery, oh man, I don't see him no more. We got, I, they took me in the car, took him in a van. I see him get out the van, but I don't see him no more. So I think like I had to use the bathroom because I don't know where he at. It ain't with four rooms in there. I'm in the last room. So when I get come out to go to the bathroom, he in the damn room. They took him back out there. He went back out there, showed him where he put it there. And when they come back in, I've been handcuffed to a chair for hours. When I get back, we got you, but we got we find find what? I don't know what's going on. Find what? They tell me what time it was. He still when they take him to scrape to the to the prison and put him in the hospital in a hospital bed, hang him, cook him to the bed. They take me later on down to and put me in this what, right when you come in booking and they got a little room that where they keep uh, that where they keep me at. They was away from they wouldn't let me get around the prison or nothing. No prison, none of Did you know how big it was at the time, or, or, or you thinking they just got you for that little small amount they found? I ain't thinking they got it for nothing. That's the tough. That's the part. I, was, I ain't thinking they got it for nothing. I don't know there's no dope. There ain't no dope there. No for to be no dope there. I was on my way to Alpharetta, the CJB. So you don't know the seriousness of it? I don't know the seriousness. I'm thinking they just going to hold me like they do, talk a little mess to me, talk and going out of the dope. So and when then, you find out? I find out when, when uh, uh, what I what I said, uh, sorry, uh, uh, what his name, uh, Chief of Police Jim Brooks, Chief Jim Brooks, came in there. He said, "Good job, y'all." He said, "Man, we finally got you. I said, you ain't got nothing. What you talking about, man? You ain't got nothing. Got me number. Be out in a few minutes. I'm on still trying to figure out why I'm still here." He said, "We got you. We find it. He was in that trash can. I, what you talking about, man?" Right when they started hitting me, said, we find it all in the trash can. So now I'm putting it together. Hey, I jumped out. He took off running. He ran through the lady yard, put it in the trash can, ran back to my butt low high. But now Al ain't nowhere to be seen. I ain't seen Al in no more. So now you feel like he done it? I feel like something wrong. I but, feel. but do you still know that they about to come with the kingpin? You just thinking they about to come with what they found? Yeah, I'm thinking they finna come with what they find. And they take me out because all they charged me with was possession with intent to distribute. Wasn't no kingpin, nothing. That one charge. They take me out enough. Intent to distribute. That when they throw a said what was telling my lawyer what was this and what was that and how much they fired. Possession with intent to distribute. See, I could have easily said that was here and we could have. But that wasn't the key. After that deal. Hey, uh, they kept us down there for so many weeks, so many weeks, wouldn't give me no bone, wouldn't I finally got it where I can get a bone. The feds took over, took me to uh, Millersville. They took me to Millersville. Okay, so it was the state at first yeah, that got you. Yeah, state first. Then they switched over to the fed. They took me to Millersville. And next day I know, here they come again with some more. They come back with six more count. I got seven count now. What's the, what, what, what the old count are? Count one was possession with intent to distribute. Count two was uh, conspiracy. Count three was, was uh, continual criminal enterprise, kingpin status, RICO Act. And the other one was money laundering, money laundering. And just the other stuff that just ran 20, ran 20, 25 years for them. How you felt when you found out you had them charges? I always thought I was gonna beat them. Crazy in my mind, I always thought I was gonna. It ain't had nothing on me. I ain't stood there. I'm a so at no time you ever felt like. I never. 
I it never felt. Yeah, the only time I felt it when it was over when I went through trial. When I went through trial and, and they said guilty, when they find me guilty, they told me. Hold on, me, before we get to that, we're going to get to that. Uh, when you get you get the charges, you know your man done set you up. Yeah. Okay, what 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 happened once they indict you? I'm quite sure they start picking up other people. You got to go through a process. What, what's going on when you? It was just me and they uh, Then they went around and they snatched up my three children, mama. I saw her come up in the room I was in, you can see everybody coming in when they get booked. I see her bringing her in and she bawling, going crazy, crying like I don't know what. Then they come and got Tim. Then they start picking up all of them. But they were making, they were letting them right back out though. They're making born to come back out. After that, they started, they came back in and said, the, the counts was, well, that one I told they went up on the counts, then they changed the count, went up. And after that, they called out all my indictment and they thought my lawyer come in and tell me who all testified against me. And as it went on, they were picking up more people and more people, more people. They started indicting everybody and, and people just thought, yeah, everybody, all half of them were glad to tell them. It was half that didn't never say nothing. It was half that told something but never came to court. It was a half that they indicted. A lot of guys did some So she went to trial, you seen it all. I seen it all. A lot of guys didn't tell, didn't, didn't say they tell, but I know they told. Any of them got on the stand in your trial? Tim, Tony, Al, Marco Willie C. How you felt when you seen them get on the stand? I feel real, it hurt real bad because when we when they first got us, they told up my had a attorney, they had put me in a cell with an attorney named with Dugan, somebody named Dugan. Make him run him out of making because he was winning every case. They couldn't nobody beat him. He kept getting everybody off of everything. And he was sitting up with me, so they ain't got nothing on you right now. He said, but what they finna do is start finding a whole lot of people and try to then testify that when they gonna get you. He told me that when he told what conspiracy is. Conspiracy means Anybody can say anything about you. We ain't got to know you or no matter what. They call your name, and all it takes is one, and you through. And once Al decided he gonna tell the fire, I was already through. Once Al, so it didn't make no difference who ever come. All they, all they need was one. And after that one came, I, I oh man, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead. So you knew before the trial was even over with. Yeah, cause it was conspiracy. They had me for count two of conspiracy. I already got Tim Tony Al to testify against me. It didn't take but one of them. What carried the most most time? The uh, the, the, the continued criminal enterprise carried twenty to life. The conspiracy is ten to life. 